right. It's Wes, welcome to this video. Last year I created a video about how to use custom video modes on the Canon EOS R. But after nine months or so of using the camera and some additional research, I've changed my video settings for 2020. Today I'm gonna to share with you my new video settings on the Canon EOS R. Let's go. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. Part of learning, actually the most important part is knowing when you're wrong. I have to admit my video on custom video modes is out of date. It's no longer how I set up the Canon EOS R. I was learning and now I could say, I have a better way to set up my camera for a video. Thanks to Michael Drowley and some of his tips in a video he put out last year, I rewatched it and got some great new ideas for this coming year, and I've made some discoveries of my own. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you how I set up my camera for video. Subscribe, leave a comment, click like, I appreciate you. First of all, I'm gonna name the changes that I'm making, then I'm gonna jump back and show you how to make those adjustments step by step and describe the benefit. At the end of the video, I'm gonna share two major EOS, EOS R video shooting tips that can save you a ton of frustration. So watch all the way to the end. Here's a quick info burst of my C1, C2, and C3 settings. Just hit pause for a second if you wanna check those out, but I'm gonna go through all of them one by one. My number one change for this year is the ability to control ISO and video mode by hitting the multi-function button and then using the front wheel. Number two is the ability to start recording in video mode using the shutter button. Three is adding the ability to access the menu from the down button. C3 is gonna be my 60 frames per second mode. C1 is gonna be my 24 fr frames per second mode. C2 is gonna be my 120 frames per second mode. And all the custom settings are with C-Log. So let's go back to change number one. I added the ability to control ISO in video mode by hitting the multi-function button and then using the front wheel to scroll up or down to change the ISO. Here's how to save that setting. It's a little bit tricky. Push the menu button and go to the fifth icon over, which is a small camera with a continuum of five dots or little lines underneath it. It's the orange menu. Go to page four, go to the first option, customize buttons, then navigate down three and over to the second column, which is the settings for settings in the video mode. You should be on multi-function button and see that lit up on the camera diagram on the left. Press set. You're gonna navigate to the box that says dial function, which means pushing the multi-function button unlocks a dial adjust. Now, while on that box, push info detail set. That's little box that appears below. Move the highlighted box to ISO. Make sure you hit the next button on the bottom right, then click info okay. This setting is extremely important to me because of muscle memory. In photo mode, this is where I adjust my shutter speed, which lets in more or less light. It's the first setting I go to in photo mode to brighten a picture, so my muscle memory is the front wheel for more light. That is a connection that makes an easy transition to apply the same movement for the same effect in video. Usually when I'm filming handheld, I'm supporting the camera weight with my left hand, so rotating this wheel is less likely to induce camera shake than the control ring on the lens, which is a left-handed adjustment. Thanks to Pablo of Buenos Dias Imagery for this idea. He's actually right here filming some B-roll. <laughs> Setting change two, I added the ability to start recording in video mode with the shutter button. Now here's how you set that up. Press the menu button and go to the fourth icon over the wrench icon, yellow menu, go to page four, go to the fourth option, which resembles a teardrop shape icon. It looks like the shutter button viewed from overhead and says BTN function or button function following the icon. Navigate down to the second option, fully press. Press set to see the options, which are either no function or start, stop movie recording, and choose start, stop recording. Then hit the menu button to go back. I tried the tip from Michael Drowley about setting the autofocus on button to be a record button, but I found that I walk around with my camera when I'm doing handheld documentary filmmaking. I have the camera at my side and I'm always inadvertently um, putting pressure on that button and starting recording. Try out different setups. Don't be afraid to do what works for you. It doesn't make sense to force yourself to use someone else's settings or tips if they don't create a better experience or workflow for you. All right, setting change three. I added the ability to access the menu from the down button, which makes it a right side action, same as all the other video controls. Here's how you set that up. Great tip from Michael Drowley. Orange menu, page four. First option, customize buttons. Go down 12 steps and over to the second column for video settings. Press set to see the options. Navigate to menu, press set, and you're done. 
Change number four, this is a big tip, so I'm gonna cover the benefit first. This tip comes from Michael Drowley, again, sharing this critical piece of information. If you're in photo mode, say you're out taking photos on the Canon EOS R and you hit the record button, you can start recording on the fly, recording video. This is a great feature of the Canon EOS R. However, you need to know this drops you into your C3 custom uh, mode video settings. Uh, and I did this in a video, I covered this, so I'm gonna link it up here so you can check it out. But with this piece of knowledge, C3 is where Canon takes your video settings from if you start shooting video from photo mode. So now my C3 settings is 60 frames per second uh, HD because if I'm going from photos to video, I'm most likely doing a photo shoot and I'm trying to grab some on-the-fly B-roll footage. 60 frames per second allows me to set the footage to playback at 50% speed or a nice slow motion effect when I want to slow it down while I'm editing. I don't want 120 uh, in run and gun situations because you can only do manual focus. And in a run and gun situation, I don't want that focus mode. For C3, I have that shutter speed set to 1 over 125, so double the frame rate. And then my ISO is 400 because with that shutter speed, I'm going to need to brighten it up a little. I have the f-stop at 1.8 for super crisp point of focus and the shallowest depth of field. Here's how to set it. You go to the red menu with the camera icon, page one, first movie, first option, movie record quality. Press to see the current settings with movie record size highlighted. Press set again to see all the options. Now make sure movie cropping is disabled. On sound recording, here's a little secret, select manual and on the record level, set the input level to three quarters of the way between the far left marker and the second marker. I leave wind filter and attenuator disabled. Make sure movie digital IS or image stabilization is enabled. I believe I got my sound settings from Buenos Dias imagery, so shout out to Pablo again. Next on the red menu, go to page four and go down to the fifth option for Canon log settings. Press set to see your options. On the first option, press Canon Log and move over onto 8-bit. If you plan to always use an external recorder, you can choose 10-bit, uh, press set, and you're set. Exit to the back screen, and that's a lot of adjustment. This adjustment the Canon EOS R makes when going straight to recording video from photo mode is a critical piece of information. I'm looking forward to benefiting from this change in 2020. All right, change number five. So now I need to move my 720p, 120 frames per second setting to another custom mode. It's not the most critical, so I'm gonna make that decision last. Um, actually, the most important thing is where I put my normal HD video mode for talking, uh, recording talking head videos, interviews, vlog type content. That's 24 frames per second. Shutter speed 1 over 50, ISO 100, and uh, f1.8. I'm going to make that the number one position so I always have it easily memorable. It's the first thing I access on custom video mode settings, and it's my most common use for the Canon EOS R um, in video currently. All right, change number six. Whew, I think I need a drink of water. Change number six. So custom mode uh, button number two is by default gonna be my super slow motion, 120 frames per second. My settings for that are as follows. Shutter speed will be double the frame rate, putting me at one over 250. This means less light will be getting in, making my footage dimmer. I, should pro I will probably set the ISO to 400, but I'm gonna set it to 800 to bring in more light because I'm actually gonna change the depth of field not to 1.8, but to four. It's important to remember that when you're filming super slow motion, 120 frames per second on the EOS R, you can only access manual focus. And I wanna make sure if I'm doing cinematic, super slow-mo, everything I want in focus is in focus. So I'm gonna get a little, little less shallow with the depth of field. So F4, one over 250, that means I'm bumping my ISO up to 800 to get a brighter uh, footage. Now with the second EOS R that I own, I think I'm gonna set up the C2 for time-lapse video recording mode, which I did a video on recently. I'll link it up here somewhere. Uh, it's a handy preset. Time-lapse video is kind of tricky. It takes a few tricky steps to get to it, so it's a handy preset. And that might be a good alternative for 720p, 120 frames per second, um, if you're not likely to use that kind of slow motion footage. very important tip I was telling you about at the beginning that can save you a ton of frustration and possibly heartache every time. Every time you set your C1, C2, and C3 settings, 
make sure that you're also checking and saving the correct custom button setting. The correct custom button setting. Make sure you're also checking and saving the correct custom button settings. You don't want to get everything set up correctly in terms of your shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO. Then neglect to make sure that the shutter button is set to start recording in the video mode or something like that. Just double and triple check. Take it from me, take it from my experience. It can be tricky to make sure all your custom settings and custom button and custom dial settings are consistent throughout all of your C1, C2, and C3 presets. Last note, I do everything in C-Log with View Assist on. I hope you've enjoyed this step-by-step -step walkthrough. Special thanks to Michael Drowley for his uh, conversation on Instagram and his videos. He's doing great content over there. Special thanks to Pablo from uh, Buenos Dias Imagery. And um, I enjoyed putting this together. It actually took months and months and months of tweaking. So I hope this is useful for you. Um, I'm thinking about doing a video about how I color grade a Canon log or C-Log. Now that I've switched over to DaVinci Resolve, um, I got a couple of comments on YouTube asking about my process for editing and color grading, so I'm thinking about doing that. But most importantly, subscribe, leave a comment, click like. I appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much.